You're listening to When Christians Speak Online Talk Radio, broadcasting out of the Washington, D.C. metropolitan area. Today's voice crying out in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord. When Christians Speak is dedicated to lifting up the name of Christ Jesus and spreading the good news. Amen, amen, amen. Welcome to the broadcast, everybody. This is When Christian Speak Talk Radio Network. Of course, I'm here today with uh, my uh, brother Cleo. Amen. It's real life. Real talk. Amen. And my name is Reverend Ray. I'm joined by Brother Cleophis. And I think Brother Antonio just joined us. Amen. Yeah, we'll know in a few minutes. But we're about to get started in a, a couple of minutes. Amen. Um, bro- Brother Austin um, is traveling. He might be with us in a few minutes. Who do you have on the line with me? Brother Tony? Yes, sir. How you doing? Oh, good. Okay. I'm doing well. Amen. So I got Brother Tony and Brother Cleophus. What's up, brothers? Hey, hey what's going up, on? What's up? All right. That's what I'm talking about. So we could do things a little different. I had just sent a message to the brothers um, telling them that I want us to talk because of the season that we're in. Uh, and we take this time to celebrate the birth of Christ. I want to talk a little bit about that. I want us to talk a little bit about that and also talk about the year you know, as men and everything like that. And uh, then whatever else that they got laid on the house, on the, on the God has laid on their mind, um, try to keep it open and everything. But the season, man, is uh, especially uh, <laughs> good time. Wait, wait, before we do, that's what we're going to talk about. But before we get started with anything else, did the Cowboys win or no? <laughs> They're winning so far. It's still six minutes to go. It's 16 to 9. Sixteen and nine. Okay, all right. Because I know er, I got to get that out of the way. Sorry, Cleophus. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I got to get that I, out I of the way. Ain't hate. Ain't hate. <laughs> <laughs> Cause I, cause I the hey, Cleophus, are you a Redskins fan? Yeah, uh, I'm, Redskins. Uh, yes, I am. <laughs> oh, God bless you. Oh, God bless you. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, <laughs> amen. It's, yeah, com- it's coming yeah. back around. It's coming back around. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> hey, look, hey, hey, look, Tony. We're not gonna receive that, right? <laughs> no, 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 no. I would beat that. We got to come no. out of the wheel. <laughs> <laughs> you know, although. Although the the, the 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 young quarterback that he put in there, even though he hadn't played in five years, he didn't look bad, man. You know. Oh, well, they, I've they got to the point that I, I, I kind of turn away and watch a game that's more interesting. <laughs> <laughs> I heard somebody, a, a brother I know, I don't even tell you his name because I don't want him to keep probably maybe, maybe listening, but he's on social media. He was watching the games. He said he decided, he decided to place on, on Facebook with the, uh, who was, the, was the mystic playing in the wear. <laughs> he didn't want to watch it. <laughs> I said, I could do a laugh. I said, well, oh. yeah. And then um, I, it's quite a few as a, a, a Tony and I, in my family, there's there's sprinkles of Redskins fans in our family, man. But uh, they, you know, they're sprinkled and they die hard too, you know. They really are. Oh wow! They die hard, man. You know, but um, 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 I'm just I'm not. I really wanted the Redskins to win, to be honest with you, you guys. Because I wanted to see them again. <laughs> you know, I'm still I'm still salty about that first win. You know what I mean? Amen. I know that if the, the people that have listened to the broadcast, yeah, this is a Christian broadcast, but this is real life, real men, real talk. <laughs> and this is what we're talking about. Okay, yes, we love God. Yeah, yes, we, love, we love, love our Lord and Savior. Yes, we do. We worship Him more than anything else, more than some football. Okay, let's not get it twisted. <laughs> you know, the Redskins, the Cowboys, or whoever doesn't pay any bills over here, you know, and everything like that. But I love, I mean, I love, always been uh, a fan of football or sports in general. 
and everything. And it's good to talk to the brothers. See, Elsa's not here, and I'm not, you know, not here with us right now. You know, and um, I know they, you know, when they, a a a Tony, we go. I'm gonna say this one thing, and we're gonna move on, right? But I know that when the Redskins lose, man, they, mm, 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 mm. they like, has an attitude, you know. <laughs> hey, man, listen, you know that goes both ways, man. <laughs> uh-huh. Well, well, the thing about it is, you know, where I stay, I stay literally about a 15-minute walk from my house to uh, FedEx Field. And oh, today, uh, to be honest with you, I didn't, I forgot there was a game going on because it was total silence <laughs> on that stadium. <laughs> you could have heard a pin drop. Huh? <laughs> a lot of people probably left drop. early, man. You know, a lot of people probably left early. I looked, look, you I must looked be at over in that Rao John area. <laughs> huh? I said he must be over in that Rao John area. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that is too funny. That is too funny. I'm gonna. Uh, I, uh, my brother Tyrone had asked to join us, man, but. You know, I, I shouldn't have to chase people down. What do you think, guys? Should I call them or not and put them on blast on the air? <laughs> would, that be, would that be wrong? Would that be wrong huh, if I do that? You know, let's, uh, let's, let's see. We can do these kind of things. Let's do this. All right. Uh, let me see me put this number in here first. And I'm probably going to get this machine. But y'all y'all can say on the air and it's recorded for indefinitely where you at, where you at. <laughs> see, we know what Elston is at. <laughs> yeah, we know what Elston is at, you know, because we, we talked to the brother and pray that with the, the weather that we're having, that he had um, safe travel and all that kind of stuff, you know. Yeah. Um, and everything. I don't know about you, guys, but where I live at, I live in the Richmond, Petersburg area. And we got pre- hit pretty hard here, you know. Wow. I know. Yeah. Did y'all get in the snow up there? I've just got. We've just gotten the dusting here. Um, yeah. You know. Yeah, we got but, just a little sprinkle. Yeah. Uh, oh man, we got like a blizzard condition down here. <laughs> 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 so is not that far from the mailing, so I don't know. Okay, let's see. Let's do this. Let's see if this works. All right. Right, yes, yeah. down. You have reach. Carol C. Rose. Roses, clean and service. Please leave us a detailed message and we'll the return your call as soon right. as possible. I'm put them on Thank black. you very much. <laughs> God bless you. Okay, all right. Where you at all together? Tyrone, where you at, man? Where you at? Where you at, man? Where you at, man? Where you at? at the tones, please record your voice oh, message. When you are finished okay. recording, you may hang up or press pound for more options. Okay, here Tyrone, we go. Tyrone, where you at, man? Hey, Tyrone, where you at, man? Where you at? <laughs> this is the broadcast. Real life, real men, real talk. I'm here. The brothers are here, man. What's up, bro? You said, oh, I'm going to be on the I'm be Where you at? Where you at? You know, oh, he oh by the way, Tony. He, uh, you know, he's a cowboy. He's a cowboy. Yeah, he probably is. He's a cowboy yeah. fan too, so he probably is watching the game. All right, yeah. so we're gonna go ahead and end that. <laughs> I'm, <taking a> <laughs> I'm gonna tell him to listen to his message, man. Okay, I'm telling him to listen to the message and everything. Um, again, everybody, we, I'm just want to welcome y'all to the broadcast. We help talk a little football, mess with my brother Tyrone there and everything. Um, Cleopas and Antonio with me. Um, um, Elston should be joining us hopefully if, uh, uh, soon. If not, then we'll go. Uh, we keep him in prayer. He is traveling. Amen. So we want to um, thank everybody for tuning in. Um, if you, you're signing in to the, um, the broadcast, thank you for listening. We're about to get started. We're going to go ahead and open up in prayer. I'm going to do something a little different. Amen. I'm going to ask um, um, uh, Brother Cleopas to open us up in prayer, if he doesn't mind. Not at all. Most gracious and merciful Father, we come before you this evening giving thanks unto you for this is the day that you have made and we choose to rejoice and be glad in it, Father. Thank you for this broadcast, Father. Thank you for the vision that you placed on uh, Reverend Ray's heart, Father, for for men uh, to bring us to another level, Father, to be transparent in our lives, in our lives, Father, where iron sharpens iron. And Father, we thank you for every person that's uh, listening to this broadcast, 
We thank you for, the, uh, for healing, for deliverance, in the name of Jesus. And, Father, we just give you all praise, all glory, and all honor. Now, for Holy Spirit, we invite you in. We ask you to have your way in this broadcast. The lives will be changed and transformed. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Again, you're listening to When Christians Speak Talk Radio. Amen. Amen. I'm Reverend Ray. Today's broadcast, of course, is Real Life, Real Men, Real Talk, R3, uh, with um, um, Brother Tony um, and Brother Cleophis. And, and I'm Cleophis, um, Brother Ray, and Brother Elston should be joining. We should have another brother join us. A couple other people joining us, too. I'm not sure yet. Uh, everybody's probably trying to deal with the snow. And, and there's football weird competition with the Cowboys players. So <laughs> we've got a lot of things going on. But it's all good. So we are just grateful uh, for the brothers that are able to uh, make it. And I, like I said, I had sent them a message earlier. And, uh, I mean, bro- brothers, we're in the Christmas uh, season, the birth of our Lord Christ, Jesus Savior Jesus Christ. Uh, I know that a lot of times, and we're gonna. I, I want us all, all three, to talk about this a little bit. A lot of times, we get people, and me and two in the past, get caught up in the, the business, well, not the business, but the the gifts and all that other stuff. But forget about the reason, you know, that we celebrate this time of year, you know, um, on Christmas, um, this, this in December and everything. And, and that's because our Lord and Savior was born to die. To die. And we as men, um, especially if you're married or you're head of house or family, need to be the, the uh, uh, not the instructor, but be the, be the priest to make sure that that is understood in our families, even with uh, kids or grandkids waking up or whatever. So go ahead. Uh, either one of you guys, uh, let's start with um, Tony. Start with you first. Tell me about uh, what, what Christmas or uh, this season mean for you, that kind of thing, as a man. Okay. Oh, okay. Uh, well, one of the things uh, I kind of want to bring up uh, for this season, and, and I went to church today, it kind of really – the pastor that preached today, he kind of put things in perspective. So uh, as you probably know, in your Bibles, uh, the last chapter of the Old Testament is Malachi. And then right. after Malachi, you probably in your Bible have a blank page that just says, you know, transitioning you to the New Testament. Well, in that period from Malachi, it was 400 years when God didn't say anything. God didn't speak to any prophet. He didn't speak to any priest. He didn't speak to any lay person. He didn't speak at all. He was silent for 400 years. And then one glorious day in Bethlehem, God spoke again. And it was the cry of a baby, which was Jesus Christ, our Savior. So just think about that for the greatest gift that was ever bestowed on mankind happened around this time of the season. Um, and when you really put it in perspective, <clears throat> no gift that we could give our spouses, no gift that we could give our children, our relatives, our friends, is ever going to trump the gift that God gave to all mankind. And it's a free gift. It's a gift that is ne- once you accept it, it's never taken away from you. It's a gift that redeems you. It's a gift that helps you find purpose. It's a gift that helps you to have a clean, steadfast, and loving heart towards everyone, and that's Jesus Christ. So um, I could just remember as a kid, you know, growing, you know, as a kid, I, I just was focused on games and toys and clothes and as I start getting older my my focus starts shifting to what can I do to better serve what can I do during this Christmas period to really help my children to understand the true reason for the season and it kind of blessed my heart today that uh, my daughter she's five years old she said uh we was coming from church um, I want to hear, Mary, did you know? Mm-hmm. So she wanted to hear the, song, hear the song, and we played it, and she wanted to hear it uh, a lot. 
you know, so we played it at least about two to three times before we actually got home. But it synced in with her because she realizes, yeah, Christmas, I get presents and so forth, but she is constantly saying, Christmas is Jesus' birthday. Christmas is yeah. Jesus' birthday. We're getting ready to celebrate Jesus' birthday. So for me, that brings so much joy in my heart because she already knows at a very young age what Christmas is really about. Amen. 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 Great. Yeah, well, <clears throat> for me, um, you know, growing up in um, as a kid and, uh, you know, you the gifts and, you know, when I look at things today and how commercialized it has become and, you know, even we're trying to take Jesus out of everything um, in the world today, out of schools, out of the courthouses, um, and it's even people now. Yeah, I've just gotten to the point that, you know, for me, I'm always going to say Merry Christmas. I'm always going to say, uh, you know, Happy New Year and not Happy Holidays um, because it's, you know, you can get so uh, desensitized and fall into the worldly system of, of what's what's what is what the devil is trying to do and, and take Christ out of everything. So Christmas is a is a special time for for me for my family. Um, you know, being a uh, father of three daughters and having four grandkids, uh, you know, to watch their faces on Christmas morning, <clears throat> but more importantly, the opportunity to share with them about this Christ that we serve. And I've learned that uh, giving um, and giving from a from a pure heart. Um, and it it's, it doesn't matter really how big the gift is or, or how expensive the gift is. It's having a heart to give. And that's what God did <coughs> when he gave us his only begotten son. Um, John 3.16 says that he says that God so loved the world that he gave. Um, and he gave even knowing that we would turn our backs on him. Um, if it had just been one person that... that, that uh, he was given his son for, he would have still did it because he loved us so much. And so I think about the giving. I think about the love that it took to give. And it just, uh, it changes things in me that, you know, this time of year, and man, so many people are depressed and oppressed about this season. And, you know, it's just, it's a, it's, it can be a sad time for some, um, but it really should be a joyous time. Um, and uh, we should just love up on one another and uh, and really celebrate the birth of Christ, uh, yeah. our Lord and Savior, and uh, not get uh, so caught up in um, all of the commercialization of it. <clears throat> you know, there's there's a there's a time and place for everything, but we really should just uh, rejoice in it. Um, one, I was in a leadership meeting on yesterday. <coughs> excuse me, and one of the things that that came out it says. Uh, talking about a gift, <clears throat> the gift speaks on behalf of the giver and tells you what the giver thinks of you. And God's grace to us is a gift. You know, it didn't, uh, didn't nothing that we did to earn it or deserve it. It's a gift. It's free to us for those who will accept it. Amen. Amen. Again, you listen to real life, real men, real talk. Uh, this is Ray and Brother Ray. You got Brother Cleopas and Brother Antonio with us today. Uh, this is a broadcast that we do once every month on the second Sunday of the month. Amen. And we wanted to just sort of close out the year talking about uh, the Christmas, talking about the birth of Christ. And that's basically what we're doing. Man, if you have a desire to call into the broadcast, you can do so by dialing 646 646- Four seven eight zero six six zero. Again, I want to welcome those that are listening now. I also want to welcome those that are uh, that are list will be listening later uh, through the po- different podcast platforms and everything. Uh, but Christmas is a very uh, and even with, with uh, as, as Cleo was uh, for saying, I got to put out the same that Cleo was is my cousin. For those who may not know, okay. So for for our family. Uh, I remember um, we always went to church on on Christmas Day, you know, early, early in the morning. Yeah, <laughs> <I> service. <laughs> early, early. 
<laughs> you know, and, you know, always when you, if, if we didn't, there was, and of course, there was a time in my family, my family, my, my mom was a little more strict than what uh, Mr. Brother Cleophus had to go through. <laughs> 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 and stuff like that. At least I felt that way, you know, so what, what, what would take place is that growing up as kids, is that at first there were times that we believed in Santa Claus, not going to go put that out. We would hear. And then um, my mom and the pastors in the church got together and said, hey, look, we just start telling these kids there ain't no Santa Claus, okay? I'm your Santa Claus and everything like that. So that that was a big thing <laughs> for a kid growing up to realize, what? There's no Santa Claus. Because I was probably like most people, most kids, and now, of course, you know, in a way, that's different. I don't keep believe you admitted that on air, but I would do that. And then, um, but what would take place is that they would put out the, um, the mom and the family would put out whatever towards a gift that we give it, and then we go to church. <laughs> and we go to church and we stay there and we eat breakfast and we come home. And then Christmas start and everything, um, but I'm, I'm I, and I might be wrong. I don't remember anybody. I know they used to tell us that we celebrating the birth of Christ, and you know, and but and they and in the in the church service, what they would do, um, they would discuss about the birth of Christ, why it's important, and that kind of thing. And I think that's that. May, I don't, I'm not everybody, but I'm, I don't know whether that's missing. Um, um, in the families today, that com- that community where they talk about, hey, this is why we're doing this, and everything like now. What do you want to tell your kids? There, Santa Claus is a lie, and, a, and that's up to you, you know. <laughs> but he, it is a lie. There's no such thing as Santa Claus. There were a man that they called Saint Nicholas that did do something similar, but he wasn't dressed in a red suit and came down the chimney, nothing like that. Okay, but uh, but, but my point is is that I understood uh, one of the things that I, I, I found out as I got older, and you guys probably know this too, that a lot of the, the holidays, especially Christ, Christian holidays, were mixed with paganism. And, and, <laughs> and, and this is a way of, 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 of giving to everybody all at one time, to mix mm-hmm. paganism, a lot of different things. So, but we that know the Lord and we that have read the, the scriptures, Understand that this is really about the birth of Christ. No, we don't know where he was born on the 25th day. We don't know about that. But we do know that he was born. <laughs> and that's the biggest thing that we take away, that the fact that he was born to die for us, born to, so that he can yeah. save us, born so that we can live. Man, I'm trying to get happy over here. Born this so that we can be <laughs> redeemed, so that we can walk in the garden with the in the cool of the day with God, and He began yes. to tell us the allegories and the yeah. mysteries of His Word. Oh yeah, <laughs> that's what we know. Oh, God. We know that for a fact that He was born for that. You know, born this so that we can have a relationship with Him. You know, so we can have yes. an intimate relationship. Go ahead, Pierce. No, I said yes, yeah. I'm, I'm oh, okay, so, yeah. Born that we can have a relationship, man. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's awesome. I know, that's awesome. And I think that if we, as the body, you know, the world's going to be, I always tell people the world is going to be the world. That's how I go and say, they're going to yeah. do their thing. But if we, as the body, get back to the basics of that, you know, Christmas in itself, uh, Easter, all these major um, resurrect, not Easter, but resurrection, they will take on a whole new meaning for us. You know, and then we yes. can be able to see the true love of God that he was willing to, to give his life for us, man. So I, I just think that that's, so I think I, I might not always agree uh, a, a Cleopas with, with my roots <laughs> where I come from, came from, but I thank God. Right. For Ray, you, I can, you know, I'm, I'm- you a thousand percent on that. <laughs> yeah, I thank God for it. You know, because we yeah. I now understand what yeah. they were based on. Go ahead. Yeah, I mean, I, you know, I, I definitely agree with you. I mean, you know, um, I think every uh, uh, person, every man, every woman um, may not, you know, a hundred percent agree with uh, their rearing, or agree with what they were taught, and all of that. But the reality of it is, is, is 
the Bible says to train up a child in the way that they should go. And yeah. I think good foundational principles, and that is the reason that we are where we are today in, in our belief and our faith. Um, look at what you're doing. Um, you know, God is speaking to you to, to get a message out, and, man, you're doing it, you know. But right. that didn't come just because you know, God decided to speak to you one day, there were some foundational principles that you were raised up on that even when you walked away, the principles were still there and you were able to come back. So that, that's right, right. the beauty of it. I mean, that's, and, and the essence of that is that's the gift that our family gave to us is that they raised us up in the fear and admonition of God, n- not knowing what would happen or how we would grow and go. The hope was that we would do do what was right and you know, I can speak for me. I know I didn't, you know. Right, right, right. <laughs> I thank right, God for, yeah. you know, my aunts, my uncles, my father, my grandfather, my grandmother. You know, I thank God for them. My mother passed when I was five years old, so I, didn't, I, I had a relationship but never really grew into a relationship with her. So I had people in my life that I thank God for that, that gave me something that was more valuable than any gift that I could ever get. And it was to tell me about this Jesus. Right. Yes. Amen. And I could definitely say too, uh, for me, I was introduced to God and Jesus Christ through my grandmother. My grandmother, uh, God bless her soul, um, she basically raised me. Um, and if it wasn't for her, because no one else would have took me to church if she didn't. So she was the one <clears throat> consistently that took me to church every Sunday. I mean, it was rain, sleet, snow, <laughs> hail, you, you name it. You know, no matter what it was. I mean, even, you know, when <clears throat> either I was sick or she might have been sick, unless, you know, I was almost about to just check out of here, she will give me some medicine and we going to church. Or she will right, take some right, medicine. Right. Tough it up, and she, you know, we going. But um, I thank her for that because she taught me discipline. Mm -hmm. And not only did she teach me discipline, she taught me that it is important that you try to be around not only Christian, other Christian people, but it's so important that you get that word from God, that you learn about who God is and how good he is and who Jesus is and why he actually died for you. And just going every Sunday, at first I was just like, oh, we got to go to church. I don't feel like going to church. I'd rather just stay home. But when I graduated high school and I had my own car, She had a conversation with me. I would never forget this. She said, okay, you're 18 now. You have your own car. You're about to start college. From this point forward, whether you go to church or not, that's your own decision. I'm not going to force you. That's your decision. And it took me back because I was so used to just, you know you're going. There's no if and spuss about it. But then she said, you have to start working out your own salvation. I just, hope, I just hope and pray that I instilled enough faith in you through my prayers that you would continue going on this journey, you know, in life with Jesus. And, you know, I never missed a beat after that. I was going to church probably more than she was after that fact because, <laughs> right, you know, right. it just it just really dawned on me that if I'm going to go through this life, I can't go through this life without Jesus. I tell people all the time, I've been too connected to him to just walk away from him. Right, I'm too right. invested. I'm too in it. You know, I just right. got, I got to see this to the end. I got to see what happens. You know, right. I want to see him. Towards yeah. the end, and I want everyone else to see him as well, not just me. So, you know, I just thank her for that gift because that's, you know, that gift of just putting that in me and, you know, helping me to realize who Jesus was. And, you know, I will say, too, I did believe in Santa Claus, <laughs> you know. <laughs> she kind of played, played along with it, but then one right. day I woke up 
real in the middle of the night, and I saw her putting the, the, the presents out, and I saw her eating the cookies, and then that just ruined the whole Santa Claus <laughs> experience for me. But, <laughs> but you know, it's, you know, it's, but she let me have the Santa Claus part because she, you know, that was the fun part. But then she also right, made right. emphasis to let me know what Christmas was really about. So really about. she made sure there was a healthy balance with both of that. Right, right, and I think that's that's the the the, the key word that I like is that balance. And and my 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 mom did that too, you know. She did that too. I still think that she was strict with us, but <laughs> so <laughs> and I always tell her that. But I also, real quick before we go on, uh, oh, got to continue the conversation. I want to put this out there because everybody was didn't, you know, we were blessed to have people in our lives, that have, but there are people out there that didn't have that. Okay. Yeah. So we're not trying to belittle yeah. your experience or your connection with Jesus Christ. Because the way the thing that I love about the gospel, the, the reason the thing I like that he has no risk to person. You know, you grew up in a family full of atheists. And once you say I love Jesus Christ or you receive the mission, you, you belong to him. He it doesn't matter. You know, there are yeah. people that grew up and 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 in a situation where things, I mean, their mom was a drug addict, the dad was a pimp, and everything, but God took them and and molded them and made them to something great. So that that that, but that proves to us that there is nothing too hard for God. Yeah, we have. Yeah, we come from you know a praying a family or had someone that was instrumental in and in, in, in and sending us in the right direction and everything. But guess what? Sometimes there, that person is not there. Sometimes yeah. God just, all he has to do is to just speak a word, you know, <laughs> by someone else or someone is innocent. And sometimes he just speaks to that person. Well, there, is, there was an artist, and uh, we're going to move on. There was an artist, I can't remember her name, was, she was doing uh, the, um, drugs and alcohol and just doing all kinds of stuff. And then one day she was watching something on TV, one of the uh, 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 church programs on TV, and she just told God, I, I can't do this more anymore. And she repented right then, then and that, there, not knowing anything about redemption, not knowing, but repenting right there and there. And she said at that point, God, the Lord entered her heart because she confessed. Mm-hmm. She confessed her sin and believed with her heart. So what I'm saying to you, to to because one of the dangers with uh, and, uh, with people that grow up in the church is they get customized to the church. <laughs> right. They get, right. You know, they get caught up so much into they they just go through the motions and 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 that's one that uh, you always hear me say that word that that relationship has to count for something, you know, because when you have the relationship to church, no matter that what's going on all around you, no matter what's going on in the church, your focus is Jesus Christ. You know what I mean? Your yep. focus is on him. So I'm going to let you guys try to add to that because I hope I did it justice, try to explain, because it just in case somebody listening and said that we're not in judgment of you, we're not looking at you in a different way because you didn't grow up the same way. That I, um, that we did. Look, I didn't grow up with a silver spoon in my mouth. Absolutely. <laughs> 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 I would have loved to, to get a, a a car at the age of eighteen, but that's the story for another day. Okay, but anyway, <laughs> you know, come on, help me out. <laughs> Go ahead. Yeah, no, I think I I agree with you. I, you know, you you there there are people that comes from from all walks of uh of life. Right. Um, some that uh, didn't have the experience that we had growing up uh, where we were in church all the time. Um, and quite frankly, uh, there were, you know, it's, it's amazing how the devil can make uh, sin look so good to you, you know, yeah, even at a yeah. age, you know, when I'm all, on my way to church and my friends are still out playing and having fun, what I thought was having fun. You know, and maybe they didn't have that influence in their life to 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 get them into church at that at that early age. But man, thank God that that there are men and women of God that have answered the call of God yeah. and will go out and minister to people that have never that have ne- never been to church or don't have any clue of it. And 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 then the other piece of it is, and you just mentioned it, Reverend Ray. Uh, you know. 
you can be in church all your life, and and that's what's you know the church is in you. You become uh, churchy. You do church yeah. better than you do life, and right. your life outside of the church, people that don't know God, and quite frankly, uh, we sometimes in in the body of Christ is the only Jesus some people will ever see. And yeah. Yeah. the reality yeah. is what are we what are, what does our life say about this Jesus that we serve? Is it contradict is it is it contradictory to what we we're walking one way when we're with our church family and then when we get away from our church family we're acting worldly. So yeah. uh, I think it's important that, that, that no matter what walk of life you come from, um what you grew up in, the key thing is man that that you that there is a higher authority than anything in the land and man if someone's coming and 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 there's offering you an opportunity to hear something different um number one you owe it to yourself or your family to to a listen um and then make a decision from there whether this is for me or not for me Um, and i just i'm Again, I'm thankful that, that that for you know how I was raised, uh, you know, and I'd be the first to tell you that that when I was old enough to make decisions on my own, I made decisions for the world and not for God. Yeah, you know? yeah. But I, yeah. I that those things were instilled in me so that I had a choice, you know. And right. I'm thankful I'm I'm still on this side to be able to make that choice. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think I think uh, I think with me I think I. After I got from underneath uh, the, my mom and family, I ran. <laughs> I think I ran like crazy. I ran for for a little bit and everything, and then um, uh, just I just ran. I didn't want to have anything uh, to do with church. Okay, I didn't want to even hear hear about church and nothing like that. Uh, but ran for many years until. God said, "Okay, you can't run no more," and everything. Actually, it was the the moment that changed my whole life. It was the passing of my brother, um, Melvin, and everything. Uh, that was the catalyst for me to realize that I could no longer run uh, run anymore, and it it changed my whole. When he passed away, it changed my whole life. You know, and it's amazing when you when you when you look at it because here's a situation where there's the death of a loved one, and the, his death pushed me towards Christ. <laughs> his death pushed me towards Christ. I begin to ask yeah. the question: Where will I spend my eternal life? But when I leave this mm. world, yeah, you know, his death, you know, because um, at that time I had no intentions. Uh, doing anything with the church, getting back with the church, and all that kind. Of, and then I think from there there were steps, you know, there were steps to one place. And then I began to get back into it and everything like that. But I think there was a there was a, a, a point, you know. I think everybody has a point in their life, and stuff when the, when the, the God is calling and everything, that it triggers, you know. Your trigger might not be the same as my trigger to say, okay, you know what, it's time to take. This walk with him serious. No matter where you at, there's a church yep. there somewhere and stuff. Yeah. Um, go ahead, Tony. Yeah, I just want to say too. I think you <clears throat> brought up a good point, Ray, about you know how each of us might have got the experience, you know, shared with us. And I just want to point out too, even though you know my grandmother she shared Jesus Christ with me, and you know I continued to go to church. Um, even when she basically put that onus on me, I would have to say, even while I was going to church and serving in ministry, I was, you know, I had the angel persona in church, but outside of church, I was a hellier. I was doing, you know, I, in lack of a better word, I just went buck wild, you know, just partying and you know, hanging out and doing all kinds mm-hmm. of stuff. I'm not just going to go into detail on the phone, but, you know, I was out there. So, right, right, right. and even after I finished college and I moved here to the area, um, you know, I still went to church, but then 
what I was learning in church, my lifestyle didn't mimic what I was actually learning. So kind of in a way, my friends didn't believe my testimony because it was just like, dude, you go to church every Sunday, but, you know, on Saturdays, you know, you cutting up with us. And it right, just really right, got right. got to a point where I had to get serious. I wasn't serious about it. I, I just thought, hey, as long as I go to church, as long as I participate in ministry, as long as I just, you know, keep my head level, I'm good. And I can still do whatever I want to do. But right, then right. eventually it got to the point where it was just like, okay, you can't straddle the fence one way or the other. You either you're on God's side or you're on the world side. So right. eventually I got to the point, um, New Year's Eve, uh, 2007, where I finally made the decision to be on God's side. And I think that's when I really, truly re- realized salvation at that point because I had a concept of it, but I didn't understand it. But it wasn't until I fully gave my life to God on that New Year's Eve service that I finally realize what salvation was and how I could really mess it up by all the things I was doing. So, you know, it's and just like you said, even though I was baptized and, you know, I thought I was saved, I still had to confess with my mouth that, Jesus, you are Lord of my life, and I'm going to live right. my life according to your word. And then right. that's why I think I received salvation. And that's from someone who was raised in the church, someone who, you know, was baptized and all these different things, pray over people, reading the scriptures and stuff, and still wasn't saved. I would, I would have been one of those people that would have been left behind if the rapture had happened at that particular time. Right, right. Thinking I was going to make it. So um, it, it's just, and, you know, again, to your point, no matter how you hear the word because the Bible says you have to first hear it. Right. Doesn't right. matter how you hear it, as yeah. long as you hear the word of God. Yeah, and then once right. you hear the God, you accept it. And then once you accept it, then you confess, you know, right. that Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior. I don't care where you at, I don't care who you with, you do those things, you will receive salvation. So right. that's the key point of all of this. You can receive salvation at any given time. In any place. Place. Yep. Wow. Absolutely. Wow. Yeah, that's why that's why I like the way they say it in Hebrews, uh, you know, and it says it several times in Hebrews, it says, Today when you hear my voice, harden not your heart. And and th- that that scripture is synonymous with wherever you, wherever you are in life. So right. Monday and God is saying, today, when you hear my voice, harden out your heart. And then on Tuesday, God is saying, today, when you hear my voice, harden out your heart. And then on Wednesday, and, 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 and Jesus doesn't, never, doesn't stop coming after you. Mm-hmm. He keeps not. And thank God. Yes, thank God does. he doesn't give up and say, you know what? I done asked this joker 50,000 times to accept me, and he had, he's going to ask you 50,001. Then he's going to ask you 50. Today, when you hear my voice, harden out your heart. And thank God that Brother Tony, Brother Ray, myself, and everybody else that heard God's voice that day, whatever day it was, and they accepted Christ as Lord and Savior in their lives. Mm. Yes, yeah. Amen. 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 And that's, uh, uh, man, that's right now, and I feel uh, for somebody that might be listening, you might be at that point. Okay. You might be at that point where. God is, as, as, as Brother Cleopas said, that God is speaking to you right now and everything. And he might not be saying, don't harden your, don't harden your heart, but he may be saying, I'm here. <laughs> Amen. He may be Amen. as simple as saying, I'm here. Okay? You know, um, open the door. I'm knocking at your door. Let me in to your heart. No matter where you may be in, no matter what, you, whether you may be in a place where you're about to go before the judge, no matter you may be in a place where you have lost every single thing that you have, you may be even in a place that you're about to commit suicide. Mm. You may be Stay. even in a place that you're about to commit suicide. And what we are saying to you today, don't do yourself any harm. Yes. But believe yes, God. Hear the word of God and believe yes. God 
and watch a change take place in your life. A change Mm. will take place in your life today. This very second, this Mm. very second, a change will take place in your life. And if, and you know what he would God would do because I'm you know brothers we're speaking to somebody right now because this really wasn't our topic we got going on to something new but this is good because this is what we were about you know what would take place God will begin to put people in your life yes. that will show you a more excellent oh, yeah. way in Him He will begin to lead you to a church that will disciple you that will love you in spite of what you may look like. In spite of what, what you may wear in, you know, clothing, all that stuff. Because all those things can, you, can be changed at a, at a time. Whatever. It doesn't matter. Those things don't matter. What matters is what, where you are and your relationship with him. Because he doesn't want you just to receive him. But he wants you to know him. Okay? He wants you to know him in his bosom of his holiness. You know, yeah. and that's called a relationship. Yes. And, that, and so, that, so whoever and uh, so whoever I'm speaking to, you don't have to call me if you let or text us or anything like that. If you can, you leave us a message, whatever. But who am I? To, I don't care what country you in, because I I got some messages, brothers, uh, that we got listeners um, that listen to us in Pakistan, and we know that mm-hmm. Pakistan is not Great really a. <laughs> Uh, a country that in love with Christians, okay. So right. no matter what country that you are in, I don't care. Even if you're uh, of Muslim faith, no matter who you are, Jesus Christ is here for you. Yes. The one yes, thing that is. I like about what we do here, that we there is no fluff, okay. There is no all that fluff and all that. No, that's not needed. We're giving you true, honest, heart to heart. Facts about salvation that you can have him today in your life, and he would change you so much, change you so much that even your family or your friends won't even recognize who you are. He would change you just like that. He's yes. done it for millions and millions and millions of other people. Why? Because the Bible says God so loved the world. The world. Yes. The world. That's all inclusive. This ain't about your the color of your skin. This ain't about your finances. This ain't about your background. This ain't about how well you speak or how bad you speak. This ain't about uh, whether you look good or don't look good. But that covers all of us. Yes. All of us. That there's a there's a part that you have to play. That you have to believe in him. You know, that you have to play in this. You know, and I was talking to someone a couple of weeks ago, and they were telling us about choice. We all have a, ch- a choice. We all have a choice. And, all, and yes. I'm, 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 I want to, uh, I know I'm talking a lot that I'm not supposed to, <laughs> but I want to talk. I want to talk to the. I want to talk to the to the men because this is basically what we are doing. I was going to talk to the men, okay, and and, and because sometimes the men, you know, we go opposite of direction where God has ordained us. God is calling you back to the place of the priest of your house. Yeah. He is calling you back to that place of being the priest in your house. That don't mean you you have dominance or rulership or you're bossy. Uh uh-uh. uh. Because everything you do is in fellowship with the person that you're with. Okay, it's in fellowship. There should be an agreement that goes on, Amen. But you are the priest, Amen. Amen. You're the priest, I mean, I, I, And I, I want to get my brothers because I know they got more to add, and uh, they're, they're going to go ahead, brothers. Well, I, I would just add to 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 what you just said there, brother Ray. Is is, is you know, society and, and this world and it will will put you into their box and their opinion of who you are. And yeah. God from the foundations of the world knew you and knew who he created you to be. We yeah. are not we are not in this world because of our parents' passion. Mm-hmm. However you got here, 
uh, if may, may, maybe you were raped and, 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 and your mom produced, I, I listened to Fred Hammond's story of how his mom tried to abort him. God has a purpose for each and every one of us. In the book of Genesis, when 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 the man when man fell, God was Adam heard God walking in the garden, and and Adam and and was hiding, and God said, "Where are you?" Mm. And Adam said, "I was I was afraid, because I was naked," and God said to him, "Who told you that?" Exactly. Who mm. told you that? Yeah. And so God created us to be. What he for his purpose, his plan and his purpose, predestined our lives for through his plan and purpose, and then here comes the world or Satan himself, and he starts to try to redefine what God already purposed in us, and now we we fall off and we get a, and we run astray as I did, and as many have, but all thanks be to God that somebody told me about this Jesus, and yeah. one day. I had to accept him for myself. It didn't matter about all the stuff that I was told. There was a day of reckoning that I had to accept him for myself. And yeah. every one of us have to go that same way. You know, and it's it's been it's, I can't I can't stress how important it is to at least avail yourself to the information. Maybe what you're doing now may seem all grand but buddy, there is a day that comes along, and you could lose it all. Yeah. You better have something to fall back on, other than uh, 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 another bank account. You better have something to fall back on that can sustain you through the long run. And I'll and I'll yeah. and I'll say this, and then I'll stop because I want to give Brother Tony plenty of time to talk um, or say what he has to say here. The other day, I was I was in meditation. And the Spirit of God spoke to me. He spoke to me very clearly. He said, my people believe more in facts than they do mm. in truth. Mm. See, facts change. The doctor comes and tells you that you have a condition, or the lawyer comes and says, hey, this is going to be your outcome. Those are the facts. Make no mistake about it. Facts change. Mm. The doctor says you got cancer. Okay, that's what the doctor said. But what does the truth say? Because the truth to me says that he was wounded for my transgressions, bruised mm-hmm. for my iniquity. The chastisement of his of my peace was upon him, and by his stripes I was healed. It didn't say I was going to be healed. It said I was healed. Mm. Yes. Yes, yes. Yes. Hallelujah, God. Yes. So, it's, it's man, it's so important to, to, to find out who you are, what your purpose is in Christ. What 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 did God create you for? What's your gift? Then you find your passion, and now you're off and running. And you're and you're serving God, and you're not looking back. And I and 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 I'm I'm listening to Brother Tony. I'm listening to Brother Ray. And, and man, our, our testimonies are similar and dissimilar. Right. But the end result is we had someone that spoke into our lives and gave us some information about. Christ and about God, and then we had to go and search it and find it out for ourselves. That's why uh, in, in the book of Acts, they say the church of Berea was more noble than the church of Thessalonica because they heard the word with all readiness, and then they went back and they searched the scriptures to make sure that what that guy said was in there. Exactly. And, yeah. and we got a lot of men and women in the pulpit that's not teaching the book, the word that's in that book. Yeah, yeah. Amen. And I, 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 I apologize, fellas, but I'm, I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> no, that deep. was that was, that was real good. That was real good. And I just want to say too, um, <clears throat> just thinking about this whole year, uh, 2018. Uh, my wife and I, we basically stepped out on faith on a lot of things that um, God called us to do. That I won't lie to you, we didn't have enough faith to step out and just really just do it because we just said either the timing wasn't right or we didn't have all the resources necessary to do X, Y, and Z. But this year we we just really stepped out there and just did it. And in the midst of doing all what God has called us to do, we have, you know, faced several storms and, um, I 
you know, just this past week, I just kind of got down in the dumps because it was just like, okay, God, I, I'm really trying to do what you called me to do. But it seems like for every step I take forward, I, there's something that comes along that just kind of knocks me off of my feet. And it kind of got discouraging. But, you know, it, the one thing I look forward to with, you know, this call was, I told my wife, I said, it's one thing for me and you to talk, one thing for us to pray, one thing for us to read the Bible together. Those are all great things, and I really enjoy those things. But it's another thing when you just have men of the same mind and the same heart that just get together and, you know, talk about God, talk about Jesus, talk about the Word, that just kind of uplifts your spirit more than anything else. When you, especially when you're going through, and uh, I, I just thank you guys for just you know sharing your testimonies and sharing what the word says because you don't know it, but you was encouraging me, and it got me. You know, I, I have the Bible. I always have the Bible right here with me uh, whenever I'm on these phone calls or any other things. But I was just going through the word, and I just said, God. Despite what the outside looks like, I know that you're still in control. Even when it don't seem like, you know, you're you're in the midst, you are in the midst of the storm. So Praise I got I just gotta trust you. Your word says that I'm the head and not the tail. Your Amen. word says that yes. riches and honor belong to you. So despite what is going on, you're in control of everything because you created everything. And it just really just brought peace in my heart. So I just want to just thank you guys. And for anybody that's listening on this phone call, stay encouraged. Despite what you're going through, despite what you might be feeling, experiencing, um, just stay encouraged and stay in the Word because God is always with you. He'll never forsake you. Uh, Jesus said, I'm always with you, even to the end of time. Yes. Even to the end of time, and even when the end of time does come, guess what? If you give your life to him, you'll be able to experience eternity with him. So he'll never leave your side. He'll never leave you, nor forsake you. You know, because he, you know, in the word it says, I know the thoughts that I think towards you. Thoughts come on now. You know, also welfare, <laughs> you know, not for evil, you Come know, on, to give you a future and a hope. So that's yeah, God man. saying that. That's God saying that. Over to God. You know, that's nothing I didn't make up. He said that. So, so he's always thinking about you. Yes. He has a plan for your life. And Cleophe said, you know, you said it perfectly. He has a plan for your life. Yes. You have to seek him and ask him, God, I know you have a plan for me. You created me, so you got to have a plan for me. You sent me here for a reason. What is it that you want me to do? Because at the end of the day, I want to hear the most beautiful words in the, wor- in the world. Tony, well done, my good yes, and faithful servant. Yes, sir. Yeah. That, that would mean more than anything else in the world. So that that I just want to say thank you guys for just helping me to, you know, realize that, you know, I'm not in this fight by myself. Mm-hmm. The chopper of iron, brother. <laughs> we, we just shop, we just <laughs> shop with iron. iron. Yeah, yes, sir. That's it. <laughs> hey, oh hey, man, look, we about we actually all all um, all the time. Um, I want to thank everyone for listening. I mean, I think the call for uh, receiving discipleship has already been placed out there. We're going to ask um, Brother Tony to go ahead and close us out in prayer. But, uh, hey, look, do me a favor if you're listening. Please share. This is this broadcast right here is going to change somebody's life, okay? Because these, these brothers on here, uh, and even, even Elston, even though he's not with us today, these are some very strong brothers, man. And they're serious about their relationship with Christ. They have some outstanding, amazing testimonies, including myself, where God has brought us from. And I look, look, I don't know who you are, but 
I know. <laughs> After 10 seconds. <laughs> we love you. Okay. So I could go on again, but I don't want to get started again because I, I feel good right now. So I'm going to ask Brother Tony to go ahead and close us out in prayer. All right. Dear Heavenly Father, we just want to say thank you, God. Yeah. Thank you, God, for this time of the year where we truly realize the whole purpose of why we're here is your son, Jesus Christ. We thank you, God, for giving us this free gift, God, Jesus coming down on a mission, on a purpose yeah. to die for our sins, to thank cover you. us in his blood, and to give us the greatest gift we could ever ever get which is eternity with you forever and ever to worship you forever and ever wow that is just such an yeah. awesome and just beautiful yes. gift that you have given to us and Lord Father we just pray right now for the men that are listening to this call the men that are, that are going to listen to this call as yes. we share this God Father I just pray that you touch their hearts I pray that you touch their minds I pray, God, that your Holy Spirit begins to speak to them. If they don't know you, I pray that the Holy Spirit reveals you to them, God. I pray, God, that if they do know you and have a relationship with you, I pray that the Holy Spirit helps them to realize what their purpose is in you, God. What yes. is your will for their life, God? Lord, Father, let us be bold. Let us be forthcoming, God. Let us um, just go out and just do your will, God. Do your work, God, because in this world it says one thing, but we know who you are. We are peculiar people, God. Thank we don't you. follow the ways of the world, God. We follow what your word says. We follow what your will is, God. And you said to go out and create disciples, God. So I just pray right now in the name of Jesus that when 2019 comes around, that we go out and we create disciples, God, yes, God. that we baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, God, that we uh, proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ to everyone who has yes. ears to hear and a heart to accept you. Father, we thank you. We love you. We thank you for Brother Ray for starting this forum, God. We thank you for his obedience. I pray that you bless him. Give him double, God. Yes. Bless his household. Bless everything that's connected to him, God, for his obedience, God, in doing this. In the name of Jesus, God. Father, we thank you and we love you. And it's in the Jesus name I pray. Amen. 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 Again, you've been listening to our three real life, real men, real talk. I have, this is uh, Brother Ray, uh, Brother Cleopas, and Brother Antonio was with me. Brother Austin, we will see you next time around. Bro. But brothers, I thank you as always. You guys are awesome. God bless you. Uh, uh, have you hope you have a blessed Christmas uh, season and everything. And we'll see each other in 2019. Yeah. Hey! Amen. <laughs> yeah. Yes, man. Merry, Merry Christmas, and I wish you, bu- wish you both a very happy and prosperous New Year. All right. Thank, Thank you. Thank you so much. Right. And uh, Brother Ray, uh, yes, sir. we just won in overtime, 29-23. Go Cowboys. <laughs> 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 uh, Jerry's in the deep. <laughs> hey, what we talk about? We talk about the Cowboys uh, going against the Eagles. Okay, so we won. Way to go! That's what I'm talking about. Amen. Yeah. Amen. God is good. God is good all the time. <laughs> all right, brothers. Y'all all right, man. Man. Hey, all right take care. Take to, 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 to a couple of commercials in the end. Uh, be blessed, though. God loves you. This is Reverend Ray signing out for Real Life, Real Men, Real Talk. Amen. Amen. You're listening to When Christians Speak Online Talk Radio, broadcasting out of the Washington, D.C. metropolitan area. Today's voice crying out in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord. When Christians Speak is dedicated to lifting up the name of Christ Jesus and spreading the good news. Join us for our weekly broadcast, His Abounding Grace, with Minister Vanessa Williams. That's every Tuesday at 7 p.m. On Wednesday afternoons at 1 p.m., join Reverend Gwendolyn Dixon for the Midday Glory Prayer Line. The dial-in number is 
1-800-641-715-3580. The access code is 732-499. And Wednesday nights at 7 p.m., Challenge to Change, where real transformation begins with you. That's with Pastor Paul Morgan of Chosen Generation Ministries in Richmond, Virginia. On Thursdays, live at 12 noon, join Rev. Pat Randall for Declaring the Finished Work for an hour of worship, exhortation, and prayer. Rev. Ray and friends are here on Friday nights at 7 p.m. with the joy of the Lord on Friday Night Joy. Sundays at 7 p.m., join Rev. Ray for Bread of Life for a Word in Season. And don't forget our monthly broadcast. First Mondays of every month at 7 p.m., be blessed with the teaching ministry of Apostle Shirley Jones on Lifeline. On third Mondays at 7 p.m., join Evangelist Louis McElwain for Adoration, a broadcast of worship and ministries on the mission field. Second Saturdays of the month, join Rev. Curtis, Rev. Novena, and Minister Jordana for Bold and Beautiful, a youth and young adult broadcast setting the world on fire with the love of Jesus. All broadcast times are Eastern Standard Time. Hey family, I want to introduce Hey family, we are excited to have two new broadcasts added to the Win Christian Speak Talk Radio Network. Marriage Takeover, The Body of One. Hosted by Rev. Eric and Rev. Tamika Thompson, it airs every third Sunday at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Our hosts cover a wide range of topics to help build stronger marriages. They leave nothing off the table. Our newest broadcast, R3, Real Life, Real Men, Real Talk, premieres Sunday, October 14th at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time and will air every second Sunday of the month. Our hosts, Elston Green, Cleophas Malone, Antonio Mitchell, and Ray Rose, will create a space by men and for men to have real conversations. It's time to be free, men, from false standards and the expectations of society, family, and self. You don't want to miss this first show this Sunday, October 14th at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. When Christian Speak Talk Radio is a non-profit ministry, we are dedicated to spreading the gospel of Jesus through our programs and special guests. We exist through the generous support of our listeners. If you are being blessed through this ministry and would like to give a love offering, go to our website and click on our donation page. Your donation will be processed through PayPal. Our prayer is that you may prosper, be in good health, even as your soul prospers. So go out to our website. That's www.whenchristianspeak.com and click on the donation page. God bless you. <laughs> 